Good morning. Happy Easter season. Our prelude today is Christ the Lord is Risen Today, arranged by Renee Heike McKee. Good morning and welcome to St. Gertrude. As today we celebrate the octave of Easter and it is also Divine Mercy Sunday. We welcome all who are present here today in the church and all who are joining us through our live stream feed. This Mass is recorded with permission under our license A728690. During the Easter season, we will be using the mass parts from the Mass of Glory. And that is our top number on our hymn board. In your breaking bread, the Holy will begin at number 901, the Mass of Glory. We ask everyone now to please rise and join us in singing our opening hymn, which is Lift High the Cross, number 715. Lift high the cross, number 715.
morning and welcome. Good morning. We gather in the name of the Father and of the Son <laughs> and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, the love of his Son, Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. Dear friends, throughout this Easter season, this water is used to remind us of our baptism. Let us ask God to bless it to keep us faithful to the spirit God has given us. Lord God Almighty, creator of all life, of body and soul, we ask you to bless this water. As we use it in faith, forgive our sins and save us from all illness and from the power of evil. Lord, in your mercy, give us living water, always springing up as a fountain of salvation. Free us, body and soul, from every danger, and admit us to your presence in purity of heart. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, cleanse us of our sins, and through the Eucharist we celebrate, make us worthy to sit at his table in his heavenly kingdom. Amen. 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 Let us give God the glory. Our Gloria can be found at number 875.
Let us pray. <coughs> God of mercy, you wash away our sins in water, you give us new birth in the Spirit, and redeem us in the blood of Christ. As we celebrate Christ's resurrection, increase our awareness of these blessings and renew your gift of life within us. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Many signs and wonders were done among the people at the hand of the apostles. They were all together in Solomon's portico. None of the others dared to join them, but the people esteemed them. Yet more than ever, believers in the Lord, great numbers of men and women were added to them. Thus, they even carried the sick out into the streets and laid them on cots and mats, so that when Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on one or another of them. A large number of people from the towns in the vicinity of Jerusalem also gathered, bringing the sick and those disturbed by unclean spirits, and they were all cured. The word of the Lord. You, Today's psalm can be found at number 808 in your Breaking Bread books. This is the day, number 808. Day. 
A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, your brother, who share with you the distress, the kingdom, and the endurance we have in Jesus, found myself on the island called Patmos, because I proclaimed God's word and gave testimony to Jesus. I was caught up in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a voice as loud as a trumpet, which said, write on a scroll what you see. Then I turned to see whose voice it was that spoke to me. And when I turned, I saw seven gold lampstands. And in the midst of the lampstands, one like a son of man, wearing an ankle-length robe (coughs) with a gold sash around his chest. (coughs) When I caught sight of him, I fell down at his feet as though dead. He touched me with his right hand and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last, the one who lives. Once I was dead, but now I am alive forever and ever. I hold the keys to death and the netherworld. Write down, therefore, what you have seen and what is happening and what will happen afterwards. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, 
and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now, a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your fingers here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. It was late in the 15th century, the Portuguese explorer Vasco da Gama sailed all the way to India. Much to the surprise of the Portuguese, they discovered Christians already there. That Christian community claimed then and still does today, its origins are from the Apostle Thomas. Depending upon our social conditioning, we might interpret today's gospel passage as leaving Thomas ashamed and stricken, which probably says more about us than it does about Thomas. In fact, Thomas did not remain isolated and apart, but following his encounter with the risen Lord, Placing his hand into the wounds in his side, he made the great proclamation of faith and then went out into the world to proclaim the good news. That this Sunday within the octave of Easter is always the Sunday we hear the gospel story of Thomas is important. Within the blush of Easter joy, we are confronted with the obvious. Is resurrection real? What difference does it make? And what do I do now? Is it real? To doubt is a human characteristic and a good thing. When people of his day expected a conquering Messiah astride a horse, leading an army, Jesus doubted it. When religious leaders determined that a precise following of all the rules in Leviticus guarantees heaven, Jesus doubted it. Even upon the cross, facing his death, his agonizing cry, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? is the cry of uncertainty. Struggling with our faith is what leads to a solid foundation. While we may have grown up culturally Catholic, and that's how it was passed on, like Aunt Millie's mantle clock, it is only when I appropriate it myself through my own life experiences that it becomes truly my own. Number two, what difference does it make? We hear in the gospel two things seem clear. A glorified Jesus 
looks different, no one recognize him at first. We don't know what this means exactly, only that he is changed. The recognition comes from two experiences intimately tied together. When he speaks their names, those who love him immediately recognize who he is. And when they see his wounds, those who followed him and had been terrified, now recognize him as the Lord. Until Jesus, even though the prophets described God's suffering and pain at the unfaithfulness of his people, most people considered God beyond suffering. In Jesus, we know that is not true. God suffers just as we do. Consider the risk to people in love take when they choose to reveal to one another their greatest failures, their vulnerabilities, their weaknesses. I think there are only two possible outcomes. The new information either ends the relationship or it opens it to a new level a level inviting greater depth, the endless exploration of the mystery that is true love. Love is never tested in what is best and strongest about us. Love is tested in our failures, our weaknesses, our woundedness. In the resurrection of the Christ, we see ourselves reflected back. God loves us as we are, wounded and vulnerable. And number three, so what do I do now? It seems to me that if we believe in the resurrection of Jesus and that in his woundedness, we have extraordinary access to God's love, we need to do a few things. First, we need to live in joy. I'm not talking about fleeting moments of happiness. I'm talking about deep down, profound joy. For if our sins are forgiven, and we have gained eternal life, what passing things can cause us dis-ease? We must choose joy. And although it's a surprise to many people, it is our choice. We choose to be filled with joy just as we can choose to be miserable. Secondly, we need to move on. Time and time again, in his post-resurrection appearances, Jesus is all about pushing his disciples out into the world. When we are focused on the failures of yesterday, we cannot live at peace in the world today. Move on. Finally, do not be afraid to love, even when it means we will be wounded. There is no shame in the wounds that come from love, only when we fail to love. And love boldly, that is where God is found. Thomas had a choice to live in shame or to receive the gift of love and move on. We have that same freedom. 
that same choice. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became flesh. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now humbly present our petitions to the mercy of God. that all God's people throughout the world be instruments of healing and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That national leaders will seek peace before war, understanding before disagreement, and love instead of hate, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the war in Ukraine, the safety of those who have had to flee their homes, the families that have been separated, and those who have died, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have lost loved ones during this past year allow their hearts to be healed by God's divine mercy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we strive for simple lifestyles, showing compassion for all life, and care for the ecosystems, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those impacted by the flooding in South Africa receive the aid they need to begin rebuilding their lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died and for the intention of this Mass, Antoinette G. Linke, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Generous God, you lavish upon us your gifts of faith and peace so that we may share your Son's life. Grant the blessings we ask of you through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Our offertory song can be found at number 206, Dona Nobis Pacha. <coughs> Number two zero six.
Please stand and pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of our hands. Praise the Lord in God's name, for our good and good of all God's holy church. Lord, through faith and baptism, we have become a new creation. Accept the offerings of your people and of those born again in baptism, and bring us to eternal happiness. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. We praise you with greater joy than ever on this Easter day when Christ became our paschal sacrifice. He is the true lamb who took away the sins of the world. By dying, he destroyed our death. By rising, he restored our life. And so with all the choirs of angels in heaven, we proclaim your glory and join in their unending hymn of praise. God, our Father, you are most holy. We want to show you that we are grateful. We bring you bread and wine and ask you to send your Holy Spirit to make these gifts the body and blood of Jesus, your Son. Then we can offer to you what you have given to us. The night before he died, Jesus was having supper with his apostles. He took bread from the table he gave you thanks and praise. Then he broke the bread, gave it to his friends, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. <coughs> when supper was ended, Jesus took the cup that was filled with wine. He thanked you, gave it to his friends, and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Now what Jesus told us to do, we remember his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, the bread that gives us life and the cup that saves us. Jesus brings us to you, welcome us as you welcome him. Father, because you love us, you invite us to come to your table. Fill us with the joy of the Holy Spirit 
as we receive the body and blood of your Son. Lord, you never forget any of your children. We ask you to take care of those we love, and we pray for those who have died. Remember everyone who is suffering from pain or sorrow. Remember Christians everywhere and all other people in the world. We are filled with wonder and praise. We see what you do for us through Jesus, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, and protect us from all anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your friends, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Please offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I know really that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
<coughs> Our communion song is number 471, Eye Has Not Seen, number 471. Let us pray. Almighty God, may the Easter sacraments we have received live forever in our minds and our hearts. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for peace in Ukraine, in the world, and in our own hearts. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women 
and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Mary, Queen of Peace, pray for us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down your heads and pray for God's blessing. Through the resurrection of his Son, God has redeemed you and made you his children. May God bless you with joy. Amen. Amen. The Redeemer has given you lasting freedom. May you inherit his everlasting life. Amen. Amen. By faith, you rose with him in baptism. May your lives be holy so that you will be united with him forever. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. That was great. <laughs> Have a great week, everyone. <laughs> Please lift your voices once more in song as we sing number 163, Christ the Lord is risen today. Number 163.